In this video, we are going to learn about the ray diagram for lenses. Ray diagram for mirrors we have already done. So how to construct the ray diagram? We'll be talking about in this video, we'll be starting with discussing the ray diagram for convex lenses, right? Before we start convex lenses, what is a convex lens? Convex lens is a converging lens. Converging means it converges light. We'll be understanding about it in more details in the coming slides. So converging lenses have their applications in the cameras, the mobile camera or the, or the the, this mainstream camera, they all use converging lenses. Even the projectors that you have in your classrooms, the magnifying glasses, the lenses that you wear, the glasses, the spectacles that you wear, they are all examples of converging lenses. So what is a converging lens? If you look at the two pictures here, you see two different kind of lenses. Look at this light green thing here. And here, what are these? These are your lenses. A lens which is thinner at the boundary, thinner at the boundary but thicker in the middle is called a converging lens or convex lens. A convex lens converges the light, whereas the lenses which are thicker at the boundary, thicker at the boundary as I am showing with my pointer and are thinner in the middle, they are called diverging lenses. Their names are concave lenses. Here in this video, we are going to focus on converging lens. So what is the converging lens doing? Let us understand a set of parallel ray of lights are falling on the lens, right? If you see, they are incident on this lens body. And after passing through the lens, what do you see happening to the light? They are all converging, right? They are all gathering at a point. This is called convergence. And the point at which the light converges, it is called the focus. If you see the letter F written here, it is called the focus or the principal focus. All right. And the other thing, converse happens in the concave or the diverging lens. If you see a set of parallel ray of lights are falling on the lens, after they pass from the lens, after they are passing, they are diverging. Each set of light, if you see, they are scattering. They are diverging. Look at my pointer. They are all diverging. But if you extend these diverging set of rays by imaginary dotted lines, if you extend them at the back, they all seem to be coming out from one point. Here, this one point is called the focus. That is the difference between the converging and a diverging lens. But the focus of this video is on converging lens. But the same principles, same fundamentals that you learn for the converging lens, exactly same principles apply for the diverging lenses as well. So let us continue. Let us continue. Understanding the converging lens as we all have Already understood, converging lenses work by changing the direction of the light passing through it. The curved shape of the lens surface, if you see the curved shapes here on both the ends, refracts the light so they meet at a point. It is because why is the light behaving in this particular manner? Why is the light converging at a point? It depends. It is all the property because of the shape of the lens, because it is thinner at the ends and is thicker at the middle, this particular shape creates a kind of a refraction so that all the ray of lights which falls on the lens, they ultimately after passing the lens, they converge at a point. So the property, why this behavior is happening, it lies in the shape of the lens. All right, a few more things to understand about converging lens. Let us go through them. The point to where the parallel rays directed straight at the lens are focused is called the principal focus or the focal point of the lens. So if you see the parallel rays of light which are coming, they are ultimately gathering at a point which we call as the principal focus, which we just understood a while back again. 
here we formally talk about it this point is called the principal focus the distance from the lens to the principal focus is called the focal length of the lens now you know the focus what is the focal length focal length is simple it is the distance from the lens if you see we are denoting this distance by a double sided arrow here the distance from the lens to the focus you can also mark the focal length here as well focal length is usually denoted by a small f it is a distance starting from the lens center of the lens to the focus this is your focal length which is denoted by small f and focus is a small point where all the ray of light gathers so that's a difference focus is a point focal length is a distance all right so these things are simple to understand so far let us continue with our understanding if you want to find the image of any object through a lens you need to understand three construction rules right so please listen carefully you need to understand three construction rules here right now we are talking about construction ray number 1 so how does this ray move a ray through the center passes straight through the lens what does it mean let us understand the meaning of this statement a ray of light which falls at the center of the lens will pass straight through it it will not bend anywhere a ray of light no matter which angle it is coming from it will always pass straight through it let me show it to you on the on my whiteboard so what does it mean a ray of light which is falling at the center if you see this is a ray of light which is falling at the center it will pass straight through it without any bending it will just pass straight through it it will pass straight through the lens so i am drawing the arrows here because you are showing light light has to have arrows to depicts its direction of movement let us draw any other ray of light say this is any other ray of light if it is passing it is also passing straight through can you see all right no matter which direction the ray of light is coming from doesn't matter let's take a ray of light which is coming from the down like this this also passes straight through because it is passing through the center right so i hope you understand what this first point means any ray of light no matter from which direction it is coming from doesn't matter up or down or straight no worries as long as it is falling on the center it should pass the lens straight without any bending this is what your construction ray number 1 is we are similarly going to understand two more rays and both of them all of them are very very simple to learn and remember so this is the first ray remember it let us talk about the second ray construction ray number 2 point number a ray parallel to the principal axis passes through focus after leaving the lens a ray which comes parallel parallel to the principal axis passes through focus after leaving the lens let us understand it on a slide again so let us see what it says first things first we need to understand what is a principal axis so this red line that you see here this red line this is your principal axis what is special about the principal axis principal axis is a straight line which is cutting the lens into two equal halves if you see this is a line which cuts the cuts the lens into two equal halves so what is construction of ray number 2 it is a ray of light which comes parallel to the principal axis 
this ray comes parallel to the principal axis and after passing through the lens it moves from the focus comes parallel comes parallel and moves through the focus no matter where you draw a parallel ray of light doesn't matter this is also parallel but after leaving the lens it will move through the focus right it will move through the focus let us take one more let us draw parallel to the principal axis at this new location this will also pass from the focus all right so i am adding arrows as well to depict which way the light is moving i am adding an arrow before the lens and i am adding one arrow after the lens all right so this is what it means so you need to remember the second kind of a construction ray as well which says a ray parallel to the principal axis passes through focus after leaving the lens all right simple and easy now the third kind of a construction ray a ray through the focus leaves the lens parallel to the principal axis a ray which comes from the focus leaves the lens parallel now there whenever you have a lens you'll be having two focus one on each side we can call them f dash and f they are at the equal distance from the lens right so let us understand what this construction ray number 3 looks like how it works on our whiteboard so construction ray number 3 a ray which comes from the focus let us get a ray which is coming from the focus falling on the lens it will pass parallel to the principal axis like this let us take any other ray this other ray coming through the focus it passes parallel to the principal axis let us put the arrows as well to complete our ray diagram coming from the focus moves parallel coming from the focus moves parallel that's your construction ray number 3 all right you need to remember all three of them for your examination point of view purpose to find the image of an object so how do we use these rays let us understand say that you are given a converging lens the lens is given as a form of a line here you can also draw the lens as a form of a line it is easier to draw as as compared to drawing two curved lines it is easier to draw we are taking an object read the label can you identify the object yes the screen arrow is your object now we are going to draw some ray diagrams ray diagrams as we have learnt in case of finding the image in in case of a plane mirror here we are working with lens so the ray of lights will behave as we have just studied we'll be talking about the three construction rays all right so ray 1 let us focus on the ray 1 which is starting from the object right let us focus only on the mirror as of now and the object and let us have a quick look at where the focus is the focus with before the lens is this focus after the lens is this everything i have depicted to you they have also depicted 2f which is two times the focal length but we'll not be using that information here but for time being let the information remain as you see on the screen uh, so ray 1 how is it behaving it is parallel to the axis so how will it move it will move through the focus all right if you see there are arrows present so it's a good habit to put the arrows before and after the lens that's your ray 1 ray 2 passes straight through the center right it is passing straight through the center of the lens so it will move as it is it will not bend it will move in the same straight line right so you got two rays you can work with any of these two rays you get your image but we'll be working with the third ray as well the ray 3 passes through the focus passes through the focus 
before the lens. So how will it refract? It will be refracted parallel to the axis. If you see all the three rays will converge at one point. That one point where they converge is the image. Image of what? Image of the arrowhead because you started from the arrowhead of the object. You started from the arrowhead of the object. So here the image that you have got is the image of the arrowhead. Extend this line towards the principal axis. This will give you the complete image. This is your complete image. Now you've understood everything that you see on the screen except for a few more things. You see it is written it is a real image. It is a diminished image. So what does this point mean? Let us understand these small things as well. The properties of the image, images formed by a lens can be defined in three properties. So whenever you have an image, you need to give three properties. What the three properties could be? You have to tell if the image is real or virtual. So you first of the things that you need to decide about is if the image is real or virtual. Choose one of these not both of them. Our image which is real will be real not virtual right you have to choose one of them. Second property would be if it is inverted or upright. What does it mean? Here if you see the object is standing above the principal axis this is your principal axis but if you see the image that you get is below the principal axis here the image is inverted. Here in this case, the image is inverted. What is the upright image? Say that the image, say, which is not happening here, this is our assumption. Say that you got your image something like this. That's our assumption. If the image is above the principal axis and the object is also above the principal axis, both are on the same side of the principal axis, you call it upright. But in this case, the object and the image are on the opposite side of the principal axis. So it is inverted. Right. Now, the third property that you need to tell about is if the image is magnified or diminished. Magnified means image is bigger than the object. Is here the image bigger than the object size? Object is so big if you see and the image is small. So image is not magnified. In this case, the image is diminished. Right? And is this image real or virtual? It is a real image. Why? Because it is the actual ray of lights which are bending and intersecting at this point to create the image. There is no imaginary dotted line construction work you have done anywhere to find the image. Wherever you do the dotted line construction to find the image, your image becomes virtual. Here all the construction that you see here, it's a real construction, real movement of the light. So therefore the image is real. We'll be talking about scenarios where the image can be virtual as we proceed through the chapter. This usually happens, virtual image is formed usually in the case of magnifying glasses. All right. So the three ways in which you define the properties of the image. This is a very important thing. Very, very important thing. So please make notes of these. Image has to be real or virtual. You have to specify inverted or upright. You need to specify magnified or diminished. You have to specify. If you do not understand, go through, rewind and go through and listen to the theory which I've just explained again. All right. So in the next video, we'll be doing some, some investigation. We'll be taking special case ray diagrams. So the ray construction rays that we have just learned, construction ray number one, two and three, we'll be using them to find the images when the object is at 2f, when the object will be at infinity and the, when the object is at f. Alright, so do check out the next video which is very very important.